Okay, yes, I know. Once again, it's been a whole month since you guys have seen me. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for it to be that way. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Well, actually, I do know what to tell you because that's what this whole video is about. So uh, let's go ahead and get on with it. Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really, really appreciate it. Yes, I'm still saying all that stuff because I still plan on putting out regular videos hopefully at a more frequent clip than I have been this year. But uh, anyway, as I said, that's what this video is about. So uh, yes, this video is going to touch on a few subjects, but they're all pretty much related, so I hope it doesn't end up being an incoherent mess. But then that's the big reason I've written myself a little script to follow. Got my phone right here. Uh, first of all, yes, once again, it has been a month since I've given you all a video. That certainly wasn't my plan. Ideally, I'd be uploading a video at least once every two weeks-ish. That's kind of been my sweet spot I've discovered over the years. But there have been a few factors that have played into my decreased output so far this year. My biggest hurdle lately has been motivation. Uh, the last few weekends I've just felt like relaxing, listening to music, and snuggling with our cats. I'm not necessarily listing those in order of priority. Uh, I've got plenty of ideas for videos and still plenty of interest in doing them. But I learned a while ago that if I'm not in the zone for doing a video, it almost never turns out as good as I want it to. I figure most of my subscribers would rather watch fewer videos I've got my heart into than more videos where I'm phoning it in. Besides, y'all aren't paying anything to subscribe to this channel, so it's not like you aren't getting your money's worth. Uh, and by the way, that's one reason I just don't do Patreon or anything like that. YouTube is a hobby for me, and I want to keep it that way. Uh, putting money into the equation would start to give it that little uh, shade of feeling like a job. So no, I'm, I'm never going to Patreon or anything like that. Uh, anyway, I noticed a few weeks ago that I've only done 10 videos since the 1st of January, not counting this video. Uh, since we're about 20 weeks into the year, I'm technically keeping that one video every two weeks goal, but half those videos dropped all in one week, so let's not gaslight ourselves. But yes, that's what's been going on. Uh, I've been healthy, family has been okay, no crises going on. I've just been a bit lazy, which I maintain is not necessarily a bad thing. And I'll explain in a minute why listening to music has been an important activity for me lately. So yes, the question that the title and thumbnail of this video are kind of hinting at, am I burned out on YouTubing? Well, I was motivated last month to buy about $50 in gear to streamline my recording setup, which I plan to show you in a room tour slash behind the scenes video I've got coming up hopefully in the next month or two. Uh, and in addition to the other ideas I hinted at a minute ago, I've got a hopefully vlog-worthy Portland trip coming up in a few weeks. Uh, so no, this channel is not dead. Having said that, though, I think I have been facing burnout of a different sort lately, uh, in terms of buying and listening to music. Uh, that's one reason why I still have yet to bring back my monthly What I've Been Listening To Lately playlist series, like I said I was going to at the beginning of the year. The other reason for that was the amnesia caused by the ice storm back in January, it threw me and my family for such a loop that I honestly forgot about Playlist, as well as my Bargain Bag Hall of Fame video, which I also plan to bring you very soon. Don't get me wrong, I still love music. I mean, hello. Uh, I just haven't been listening to as much of it lately. Uh, I use my CD player at the office maybe half the time, and even at home I sometimes find myself opting for silence or white noise instead of music. But what really brought my burnout into focus was the ice storm. During those four days we were stuck at home with no power, I didn't listen to any music at all, even though I own a battery-powered CD player that I could have been using that whole time. What did I do during the ice storm? Mostly I sat and thought. One of the things I thought about was the size of my CD collection, nearly 3,000 titles, and how few of them I listen to regularly anymore. And it's continued to bother me in the three months since that storm. Another thing that's been bugging me just as much is my CD listening backlog. It's grown and shrunk and grown again, but it's been there in some form for probably three years, and only recently did I catch up on the stuff I bought during Noah and Alyssa's visit a year ago. It started to feel like an albatross of sorts. Sometimes, just to shrink the backlog a bit, I'll take a handful of CDs to play at work, even when I'm not really in the mood for music, and even though I can't give music my full attention at the office. 
Perhaps the most annoying thing about that backlog is that I spend so much time and effort just keeping it from getting bigger, listen to a CD, decide if it's a keeper, put it in its place, go on to the next one, that I've been neglecting most of the rest of my library. And bringing home that filthy CD lot a couple months ago sure didn't make things easier. Cleaning them was kind of fun, and a few enjoyable albums have come out of that lot so far, but it wasn't nearly as rewarding in the end as I thought it would be. As you can maybe imagine, all of this is threatening to turn music listening into more of a chore for me than a pleasure. Obviously, that's the last thing I want. And it's sad that I had to let things get this bad for me to realize that I need to change my habits, at least until my listening backlog is down to near zero. The most obvious change will be scaling back on buying CDs. This will be tough, especially at thrift stores, since most everything there is a dollar each. Uh, plus, as I mentioned, I've got a Portland trip coming up, and those stores up there are packed with temptation. I've made good progress lately in breaking myself of my completest tendencies. More on that in a minute. Uh, so I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to refrain from expanding, just for the sake of doing so, the catalogs of any artists I'm not really, really into. But taking chances on artists unknown to me has paid off nicely from time to time. So avoiding those impulse deaf buys, as I call them, will be the tough part. Could I be missing out on a future favorite artist? More importantly, do I really need to know right now? I figure as long as I do two things with every CD I'm about to put in my shopping basket, remind myself that it's another CD I'm adding to my listening backlog, and ask myself how often in the next two or three years I'm likely to listen to it, I think I'll be okay. It's going to be a challenge, seriously weighing the factors of availability, how often I see it in the stores, price, how good a deal it is, and priority, how important it is for me to have it, while expending as little time and emotional energy as possible doing so. Can I do it? I guess we'll find out. The other rules should be more simple to obey. No more grabbing free CDs just because they're free. Obviously, if it's a really good title that's in really good condition, one I can sell to a store or on Discogs if it's something I'm not interested in, then I'd be a fool to pass up a free CD, right? Now, this doesn't mean I won't be doing any more haul videos. Uh, they're probably just going to be smaller and less frequent. And of course, once my listening backlog is back down to the single digits, I can loosen up these buying restrictions. Slightly. As the old saying goes, less is more, and it's about time I take that to heart. I need to embrace the concept of quality over quantity. And in the spirit of that mantra, I've just finished perhaps the most significant downsizing of my CD library I've done thus far. Okay, significant for me in this case means about 10%. That might not sound like much, but for the size of my collection, that means about 300 CDs had to go. I had little expectation of reaching that goal, but I'm happy and surprised to say that I slightly surpassed it. I used to like the idea of building a huge and comprehensive CD collection, but now that I'm getting older, I've been asking myself lately, in the years, well, hopefully decades that I have left, how much of my music library can I realistically expect to listen to and enjoy repeatedly? First of all, it's not like I can't stream an album I'll only feel like listening to once every five years or so. Also, I feel kind of selfish holding on to so many CDs that I feel ambivalent about, but that someone else out there might really want to have a physical copy of in their collection. I'm a little surprised at how quickly I went through this purge. It only took me about a week of my free time, so I hope I didn't go so scorched earth on my culling that I'll have any regrets. I didn't when I skimmed through them again as I was bagging them up, so I guess that's a good sign. I did have some moments of almost painful deliberation. I saved a few after last chance re-listens, uh, even though I may not listen to them again until my next purge. But I also said goodbye to a few that my little brother Noah gave me or that I inherited from my late sister Kim. There's definitely a little guilt there, uh, but then I've still got plenty of CDs, ones that I either got from them or bought myself because of them, that I enjoy a lot more and that remind me of them just as strongly, if not more so. I've also broken up a few artists' full studio album discographies, Lady Gaga, Brad Paisley, and Tracy Chapman, just to name a few. As a recovering completist, uh, it's been fun having their full catalogs, but if I never go back to some of their albums, why keep them? And this may seem crazy, but even my listening backlog was not exempt from pruning. Yes, I pulled about a half a dozen CDs or so that I bought but hadn't even listened to yet. Mostly the impulse buy kind of stuff that I'd probably leave on the racks now, but nothing that I paid more than $3 for, so don't worry, I'm not throwing that much money away. To be clear, 
I don't begrudge anyone who has the space and money and passion for amassing a huge collection, whether it's music or other media or less practical collectibles of whatever sort, but I'm not jealous of them either. As I might have hinted at earlier, space is the biggest limitation for me. Many years ago, I had a lot more collectibles than I do now, but as music gradually took up more of my attention and more of my room, I had to make some decisions. Also, I've become a more practical guy in my older years. So when things like media that I can listen to and look at, and collectibles that have no real practical use, are fighting over the same space, and money for that matter, it's pretty obvious which one is going to win out. So I decided to unload most of my collectibles, except of course for the most personally meaningful ones. I suppose I could really shrink the amount of space my CD collection takes up by switching to those plastic sleeves, but I just can't bring myself to let go of those jewel cases. I've also been holding on to a CD binder I got for free a couple of years ago, but so far it stayed empty for that same reason. Could I get more space by building onto the house? Sure. But somehow I doubt that it'd be worth the effort and expense. And no, we are absolutely not moving for a variety of reasons. We intend to die in this house. Not for a while, though. I'm totally happy in a smaller house, less cleaning to do. And honestly, I've missed very few of those collectibles I used to own. Plus, between my brother and myself, we've continued to come up with ways of making more efficient use of the space I have available. While we were on this subject in a recent text conversation, Noah said something to me that is absolutely true. You know, Tom, it's funny, because instead of imposing some kind of limit on the amount of CDs you can buy, instead you just devise new ways that you can store them. Okay, here's another reason why I love Noah so much that I consider him family. Every once in a while, he'll be a backup for my own conscience. He'll drive a point home that I've told myself earlier, but chose to ignore for whatever reason. This new way of storing more CDs that he was talking about is something else that I'll be showing you in that upcoming room tour video I mentioned earlier. Basically, there was a bank of shelves in one of my cabinets that my brother turned into CD drawers last month, since I had just recently run out of shelf space. Yes, I can hear you asking now, what? If you just gained more room to store CDs, why are you getting rid of so many of them? Well, not only for all the reasons I just laid out, but also, with luck, this purge will give my library a few more years worth of space to grow. I'd love for it to be many more years, not just a few, but, well, I know me. Old habits are tough to break, but I'm going to try my darndest. Like any clinical addiction, drugs, alcohol, tobacco, etc., you have to take it one day at a time and constantly fight off temptation. By the way, I apologize if it sounds like I'm making light of chemical dependency or comparing the consequences of buying a lot of CDs to the far more serious repercussions of substance abuse. That was absolutely not my intent. But since it is stuff that's going unused and taking up space in my mildly cramped quarters, it does feel cleansing in a way to get rid of not just a good chunk of my CD collection, but anything I donate to the local thrift stores, give away to friends, or resell when I can. So, what am I doing with all these cast-off CDs? Well, first of all, I gave some friends a chance to pick out a few for themselves. Then I bagged up the ones that I thought might be of interest to either of the two local stores. House of Records bought a bunch, and I still have a few dozen to run by Epic Seconds. I plan on pulling a dozen or so of the more rare ones that are still left, and I'll take them with me to hopefully sell to the Portland stores for trade credit. Since they have a broader customer base, they may be willing to take the more unusual stuff that the Eugene stores would pass up. So far, it's netted me a tidy little sum, which I'll use for spending money on my Portland trip. And once I'm back home, I'll bag up all the rest, and they'll be going to St. Vinny's. I did find a few that seem to be pricey enough to try selling them on Discogs, so we'll see how that goes. I just hope that I haven't overlooked the possible disadvantages of trimming down my CD collection. First of all, being a music YouTuber who prefers to talk only about albums that I own and to show them on camera, I'd hate for that to drastically narrow the field of what I talk about. But since that still leaves me with about 2,700 CDs, I don't see that being much of a problem. And I do plan on getting back to more frequent videos soon, as I said at the beginning. Uh, besides, it probably won't alter any favorites lists I plan to do, since CDs I would get rid of willy-nilly like this probably weren't favorites to begin with, now were they? The other big downside to this purge, and recent smaller ones, is that I'm considering just rebooting my whole darn CD collection video series, since it's now outdated. What do you think? I'd go through them faster, but invite requests for albums you'd like me to talk about in more detail? Thoughts down in the comment section? 
but I also discovered an unexpected advantage. I'm more motivated to listen to my CD backlog the smaller it gets. I mentioned earlier that I've been spending weekends listening lately. Well, since that interest has come back, I've been wanting to seize on it instead of making videos. I hope you guys can forgive me. Am I listening at a faster rate because as I see the stack shrinking, I've started seeing the light at the end of the proverbial tunnel? Or am I just anxious to find an excuse to ease those buying restrictions before I have to start obeying them? Whatever the reason, I'm not going to question it. But I am, really, I promise, I am going to try and curb my impulse buying tendencies going forward. Because I owe it to myself to revisit my entire music collection and remind myself why I bought all those CDs in the first place. And maybe, in order to stimulate more listening of my library, I can come up with some clever ideas for videos. Something other than just regular run-of-the-mill album reviews. So many other YouTubers do those already, and I never thought I was very good at that. Uh, I know I can use the Discs Discogs pick a random album function, uh, but if you have any other ideas, don't be shy. Toss them my way in the comments, please. But anyway, yes, that catches us up, I think. Uh, yeah, sometimes just talking about these kind of things helps me work my way through them, helps me get past them, even when it's talking to a camera and not a person. I mean, okay, yes, you guys are people, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that'll be the case with this video. And uh, yes, with luck, more videos will be coming your way more often, so stay tuned. But for now, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comments section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to catch my future videos, hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.